And now recording. All right, so I'm gonna do some more problems in 4.3. After I think I've done enough, then we'll stop and take our quiz. And as usual, I'll put you in your breakout rooms. Uh, I'll mostly be in the main room. Persona will go from room to room as necessary. We'll see how it goes from there. Okay. Uh, I may do some problems from 4.5 also. 4.3 and 4.5 are really the same second. It's just a lot of curve sketches. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do a few curve sketches today that are more difficult than the ones that we had yesterday. And then when I think I've had enough, then we'll stop and take the quiz. Okay, <clears throat> and I sent you a Canvas announcements on this. Also, but I will not have office hours today from 10 to 11. I have to sub for another teacher. Okay, so sorry, no office hours today from 10 to 11, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, problem number, what was it? No, camera's a little bit out of whack. Can move some of this stuff around, so. Okay, but. Here's the information for 29. It says f prime of five is zero. The function is decreasing from negative infinity to five, increasing from five to infinity, concave down from negative infinity to two, union eight to infinity, concave up from two to eight. Now it said f prime is negative. That means f is decreasing. F prime is positive, f prime is increasing. Yeah, this is best, like if we were meeting face-to-face -face on campus, I would show you the book and write this on the board, but I can't show you both at the same time. So you just have to look back at the text later, I suppose, and see how that works, but in any event. Okay, so concave down here, concave up here, and the limit as X approaches either plus or minus infinity of F of X is three. Okay, so here's the information. As we approach either negative infinity or positive infinity, we approach y equals three. It says decreasing from negative infinity to five. So decreasing. So what's the y coordinate? We're not given a y coordinate, so I can just put it anywhere I feel like. And then increasing the rest of the way. So it has to satisfy all those properties. <clears throat> okay, concave down from negative infinity to two. So upside down U shape. Then between two and eight, U shaped, concave up, and the rest of the time, concave down. So that's the translation of problem number 29 that we have there. Okay. All right, so show you that again. I'll raise this up so you can see it. Okay, now for some curve sketch problems. Okay, so these curve sketch problems are definitely a little bit harder. Okay, 4.3 question 43 is what I was gonna show you next. F of X is X radical six minus X. All right, so some things that we're gonna analyze and this list that I'm putting down that mimics what happens in section 4.5. 4.5 has a lot of that stuff, okay? But it's a good idea to consider this, namely domain. I mean, why consider the graph if it's not even a domain? Okay, so I see a square root. You know you're not allowed to take the square root of negatives. So I say to myself, the thing behind my finger has to be greater than or equal to zero. So six minus X greater than or equal to zero, add X. That means six is greater than or equal to X or X is less than or equal to six. So the domain is from negative infinity to six, including the six. So I'm allowed to plug in six. I'm not allowed to plug in 6.1, right? Because then I'll have a negative 0.1 and I can't take the square root of that. I can plug in five, four, three, two, one, zero, or any negative number. So that's okay. Intercepts. It's nice to know where it touches the X and Y axis. So I can plug in zero and I get zero. And if y equals zero, then either x is zero or x is six. So I have intercepts at zero, zero, and six, zero. Later on, we'll have to consider symmetry. This has no symmetry. You can tell because of the domain. 
Okay, how can you have symmetry if on the left side you go all the way to negative infinity, but the right side you stop at six? So there obviously can't be any symmetry there. Okay, there's no asymptotes here either, it looks like. Okay, you're not dividing by anything. Okay, you can't say what happens when x goes to infinity, that's not allowed. You can't talk about x going to negative infinity. When x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Okay, so how do you know that? If you plug in a negative big number, negative a million, this is a large positive. That's a large negative. So what's a large positive times a large negative? A large negative. Okay, so that tells me in a graph, it goes down like that automatically. Okay, now for the no fun part, start taking my derivatives. Okay, so treat this as x times six minus x to the one half power. So that's a product root. First function, second function. <clears throat> so first function times derivative of the second. Derivative of the second is one half, <laughs> six minus x to the negative a half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative one, plus the second function, I might as well write it as radical six minus x, times the derivative of the first, but the derivative of x is just one, so I don't have to write anything. Okay, now some touch up. That's gonna have a two in the bottom, a negative x on top, a square root of six minus x in the bottom, plus square root of six minus x. Okay, now before I take the second derivative, and if I'm gonna have to set that equal to zero, I wanna get a common denominator. So in red, I multiply top and bottom by two radical six minus x. So that's my common denominator. So two, notice I have radical six minus x times another radical six minus x, which is just six minus x. That's very nice. So clean that up even more. I have negative x plus 12 minus two x. Minus x minus two x is a minus three x. So my best, First derivative is this, 12 minus 3x over 2 radical 6 minus x. The second derivative is not going to be nice at all. Quotient root. Okay, let me get the bottom out of the way. What's the square of the bottom? 2 squared, 4. <clears throat> and if you have a radical squared, just lose the radical 6 minus x. Okay, so that's the nice part. Now the not nice part. The numerator. So bottom times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is negative three minus, I know I changed it to a plus because it's going to be a double negative, but temporarily pretend it's a minus by formula. Top 12 minus 3x times the derivative of the bottom. Okay, so remember that's six minus x to the one half power. So if I differentiate that one half hits that two, it'll cancel out. I have six minus six to the negative half power times the derivative of the inside, which is negative one. So <clears throat> there's my double negative. So see that red plus there? It's supposed to be a negative negative, but that double negative means I can change it to a positive now. Okay, now trying to clean this up. Two times negative three is negative six. Here I have 12 minus three X, divided by square root of six minus x all over four times six minus x, which is to the first power. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to make it look nicer. So to make it look nicer, multiply top and bottom by radical six minus x, and it actually comes out pretty good. All right, now what's the bottom? I have four, six minus x to the one, six minus x to the half. That means I can add the exponents, one and a half or three halves. <laughs> okay, now if I distribute, what is this times this? I got a radical six minus X times another radical six minus X. It's just gonna be six minus X times that negative six. Then if I take this stuff times radical six minus X, these just cancel out. I have 12 minus three X, so it's very nice. Clean that up. Let's see, what do I have? I have negative six times negative X is a positive six X minus three X is three X. And then I have negative 36 plus 12 minus 24. So finally, here's my second derivative. 
Okay, quite messy as you can see. All right, so I'm ready to do my derivative test. Set the first derivative equal to zero. F prime was right here. <clears throat> Set it equal to zero. When is a fraction equal to zero? Top is zero. 12 minus three X equals zero, X equals four. You plug in four, four radical two, four comma four square root two. All right, so on my sign chart, I lay down a four. Notice I also put down the six, just to remind myself, I can't go past six from the domain, right? So you should not plug in like seven or eight or a million or whatever. Okay, so I plug in zero, I get a positive, let's double check. <laughs> put a zero here, the top is 12, positive. The bottom is two radical six, positive. So that's positive. Plug in five, you get a negative. Put a five right there, the bottom is gonna be positive, right? Six minus five is one, square root of one is one, two times one is two. But the top is gonna be 12 minus, three times five is 15, that's a negative. So it's a negative divided by positive, negative. All right, so we're ready. F is increasing from negative infinity to four, decreasing from four to six. You can't say four to infinity because I only go as far as six, we said. So that's the reason why you need the domain. So decreasing here. All right, so the roller coaster goes up and then it goes down. That means you have a maximum. <clears throat> So you have a relative max and also an absolute max at four comma four radical two. You say, how do you know it's an absolute max? Well, all the graph does is it goes up and then it goes down. That's all it does. So that has to be an absolute max in addition to a relative max, okay. And then six comma zero must be a relative min because there's no graph after that. Okay, second derivative analysis is not that bad at all. <laughs> I'll show you why. There was my second derivative. Got that back over here. Set that equal to zero. Again, when is a fraction equal to zero? When the top is zero, that gives me x equals eight. I cross out x equals eight. It's not in my domain. It's too far. I can still do my sign chart but it basically means the entire real number line up until six is of the same sign. Okay. So I'll just plug in any number and whatever number works applies to the entire real number line up to six. So what's the easiest number to plug in? Zero, put a zero. The bottom's positive, right? You have six minus zero is six. Six raised of whatever is six uh, is positive. Four is positive. Uh, put a zero there, it's negative, so negative. So this graph is always concave down wherever it's defined. So concave down from negative infinity to six, concave up nowhere, no inflection point. So here's the graph. Intercept zero, zero, six, zero, maximum at four, four radical two, always concave down. And I'm gonna call this uh, relative or local minimum, and that's it. Okay. And I'm gonna go back and do my focus thing. So yes, it's quite involved. Yes, I know some of you are saying, I can't do this kind of a problem in one hour. And you know, I realize that. So whatever I give you on a test for a one hour test, either it's an easy enough problem that you can do the whole thing, or I'll just have you do a portion of it and still be able to test you on everything I need to. Okay, get you started on one more of that type and maybe that's about it. Okay, 4.3 number, what do I wanna show you? I'll show you 53, I think I'll stop after that one. <laughs> e to the negative x squared. All right, so first derivative, e to negative x squared times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative two x. Second derivative is harder. First function, second function. So first negative two x times the derivative of the second, derivative of e to the x squared, well, we just did that. 
<coughs> e to the negative x squared times negative two x <coughs> plus the second function e to the negative x squared times derivative of the first derivative of negative two x is negative two. Okay. Factor out the e to the negative x squared. Okay. And you have negative two x times negative two x is the positive four x squared minus two. Okay, some things to notice. Do you remember a property of e to anything? e to anything is always positive. So the graph is always gonna be above the x-axis. Other things to notice, remember e to the negative x squared is the same as one over e to the x squared. Whoops. One over e to the x squared. So when x goes to either infinity or negative infinity, y approaches zero. It's an even function. If I plug in negative x, I get the same thing as positive x. So I have y-axis symmetry, as you can see from the graph eventually of y-axis symmetry. All right, set f prime of x equal to zero. x is zero. This thing can't be zero, it's always positive. So x equals zero. Plug in zero to the original, zero comma one. Do a sign chart. <clears throat> it's a fairly easy sign chart because again, e to anything is always positive. So the sign is completely determined by the negative two x part. If I plug in a negative number, like negative one, negative two times negative one is positive. This is already positive, positive. If I plug in any positive number like one, negative two times one is negative two, that's positive, so negative. Increasing, decreasing. By the way, yeah, this function is defined everywhere. So it's the domain is all real numbers. <laughs> so f is increasing from negative infinity to zero, decreasing from zero to infinity. So you have a relative max or local max at zero one. In fact, it's an absolute maximum also. Again, because we know all the graph does is it goes up and then it goes down. Okay, up, down, asymptote, asymptote stays positive and symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Okay, but I don't quite have the concavity yet, so let's get the concavity. It's a little bit clumsy. So double prime equal to zero. Here we are. That cannot be zero. It's always positive. So just four x squared minus two equals zero. A little bit of algebra. X squared is two over four. Take the square root, plus or minus square root of two over two. It's about 0.707 and plug it in, okay, x squared is a half. So I have e to the negative a half. So I have plus or minus radical two over two. So I need a decimal approximation so I know where to plot it. It's about plus or minus 0.7. And e to the negative half on the calculator is about 0.6. Okay, sign analysis for a double prime. Okay, this is always positive. Here's negative 0.7, positive 0.7. So over here, negative one. That's always positive. Put negative one, four minus two, positive. Here I plug in zero. Zero minus two is negative two, that's negative. That's always positive, so negative. And over here, plug in one. One times four is four minus two is two times a positive, positive. Second derivative, positive. Concave up, concave up. Second derivative, negative, concave down. So F is concave up from negative infinity to negative radical two over two, union radical two over two, infinity. Always give exact values whenever possible, not decimal approximations if you can avoid it. And in the middle region, F is concave down from negative radical two over two to radical two over two. So there is a change in concavity here and here. So I do have inflection points. So my inflection points are plus or minus radical two over two, e to the negative half. So finally, here's the entire graph. Okay. Notice symmetry with respect to the y-axis, zero one to max, inflection point, roughly negative 0 0.7, 0 0.6, but exact values are negative radical two over two, e to the negative half and positive radical two over two, e to the negative half, okay? 
increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, concave up. And there we go. And that's as much as I was gonna do. So let me do my focus job here. If anybody has a quick question, you can ask it, otherwise we'll get ready to do the quiz. <clears throat> so focus here. Whoops, that's later, another section. So today's stuff is this. The stuff that I didn't show you, we'll get to that another time, but it won't make any sense now. That was from 4.4. That's that. Okay, any questions, please? Otherwise, we'll go straight to the quiz. All right, I don't see or hear anything. All right, so get your cameras out or be ready to do a screenshot. Okay, so here we go. Find the absolute max and min of x squared minus 4x on the interval from 0 to 5. Okay. I'll hold it just for another 10, 15 seconds. Okay, if you can't read it, I'll say it again. F of X is X squared minus four X. Close the interval from zero to five. I can go ahead and tell you, you gotta plug in zero. You gotta plug in five. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Then figure out all the Y values, right? So you get a list. From the list, the highest Y value is the absolute max. The lowest y, y value is the absolute minimum. Okay, I'll hold it just another couple of seconds. I'll read it again, x squared minus four x from zero to five. Okay, so I'll make that disappear and get started and I'll set up your breakout rooms.